Welcome floss tubers. This is floss tube number 32 and I'm back from the mountains. My name is Dottie. I'm stitching Scotty on floss tube and Instagram and today is June the 5th, 2021. Thanks for joining me. I'm just really excited that some new people are finding me and I'm just so, so thankful for all the ones that have just watched and laughed and uh, hopefully enjoyed uh, are, keep, are coming back. So thank you so much for watching me. I really appreciate it. And no, Dolores is not here this week. It was a work weekend. So hmm, yeah, it's one of those like, do the floss tube, go to bed. <laughs> so anyway, um, after work, I just want to welcome everyone. Thank you so much. This floss tube is all about cross stitch because I love, love, love me some cross stitch. And I don't really give a lot of life updates except that I work, I teach piano, and I like to go to the mountains a good bit. And I like to camp. And I have two Scotties and a family, of course, um, and who are camera shy. <laughs> so anyway, um, I just... I'm looking forward to having some more guests. Dolores will be back for those of you that like Dolores. She is so cute and she has a lot of stitchy things, doesn't she? She has a little more time to stitch than I do. But I have a lot of stitchy friends and uh, thanks to my friends at Pandas Crossing, our local uh, needlework shop. And just, you know, the Embroiders Guild of America, which I used to belong to, which is how I met Dolores and several other of my stitchy friends. So hopefully I'll have some guests every now and then so you can see some different types of stitching. But today, you're stuck with me. So, hmm, sorry if you're disappointed. <laughs> but anyway, um, without further ado, I'm just going to tell you this is going to be real casual, as you can tell by my t-shirt. And, um... We're just going to kind of go as we go. And I didn't even iron. I've still got stuff in the project bags. But there you go. But anyway, I'm going to show you some past FFOs. And my first one is a Pine Mountain Mini Pillow. It's the four square um, spring. And it's got the kite. And I just love the little bluebird here. I just thought she was so cute. Or he was so cute. And the little bee with the flowers. And this was just fun stitching. And it came as a kit. And all you had to do was just uh, get the floss. And, you know, it was the pattern, the pillow, and everything. And you stitch it up, the cloth, and you stuff it in there. It's on 14 count Ada. And it was very easy. And you could substitute some of these things. Now, these... Are discontinued because this was an old pattern when I was looking for it so I know for a fact this is discontinued but you could probably find it on Etsy not Etsy eBay oh my goodness um, you probably find this on eBay somewhere and uh, who knows you might have a friend that might gift you the pattern or something and you quilters could just make your own so that would be good all right that's one uh, thing then we have it's a wrap no, this one's all tied up. This is also a Pine Mountain. This one is on 10 count Chula. As you can see, it's, it's very large um, cloth with big holes. Easy to see. And you use four strands of floss, three or four. And just depending on what kind of coverage you want. And it came just in a strip. And it had the muslin backing. And there's the back fabric. And you just sewed on it. I put this in my hoop because I'm a hoop stitcher. I'm not a good in-hand stitcher, but I do stitch in hand sometimes. And sometimes I stitch on a frame. Oh, goodness. A piece of floss. Imagine that. Um, but this was DMC Flosses. And like I said, it was 10 count Chula. Really fun. And then you slip it over this pre-made pillow form that I bought. It was a quilted pillow form. This is probably not available anymore either because I haven't seen it on the website. So these are these are like past, past FFOs. Then this one, it needs a little help. I'm going to have to uh, sew it back up. It's gotten ripped in the, in the changing of the pillows. This one's called Summer Breezy. Oh, Summer Breezy Days, excuse me. And this was an old, old Pine Mountain. And this was on flannel. I'm just not a big fan of flannel. 
but um this was done on 14 count ada and it was like a rustico kind of and or maybe even like a oatmeal and the fence showed up really well on this with a little bird and the kite and the flowers and uh the little butterfly button i really thought that was cute it was easy to do but the two pillows i've got that are in flannel they have ripped and i'm going to have to hand sew that back and of course not my favorite thing i like to cross stitch but when it comes to like mm, no don't like to do that so i'll have to doctor that one up it needs to go to the um stitching hospital then this one is um it's a wrap and this is the may issue of it or not issue but project and this was also on 10 count chula and it uses um let me think i think i used three strands on this one if i remember correctly now this one will only be available also on eBay. I apologize for showing such old things, but I thought, well, these are cute. They might want to see them. And this was just something that you just sewed together. And at the end, they had the button and you just put the button and tacked it together. And it was all DMC flosses with the little flowers and the different word flowers in different languages. It was French and English. So I thought that was pretty. All right, and those didn't take any time to do. <clears throat> okay, next I have um, two finishes. One is that it's been laying around for a while finish, but I thought you might want to see it before spring is over. And it was going to be a gift, but hmm, yeah, it, it just didn't, didn't make it. Oh, where's my board? Oh, here it is. See, I'm very unorganized today. But this is a Just Nan pattern, and I had a piece of linen, and it's ivory colored. Um, I would say it's probably 28 counts, and it's called Cool Delights. Or no, not Cool Delights, excuse me, Small Delights. And this is an oldie bit of goodie by Just Nan. And uh, I just loved the little rabbit, and I thought the little frogs were cute. It's a little band sampler on a bell pull. So, and they've got all the little stitches. It's got a Smyrna cross, a triple Leviathan, and a double herringbone. And the charts are, I mean, it's on the back, um, how you do the stitches. And um, you had your choice. They had uh, grafted in Anchor and DMC. I chose DMC. I did use a Chronic Metallic and a Karen Impressions uh, 4005. And then they had a Bunny Charm, a disc, and some beads, and I used those. And this is Buttercream Linen. That's what it is, Whittle Buttercream Linen. And this is my finish. And there's the little bunny up there, right there. Um, and I've got the little frogs, and the little beads are right here in the frogs with the eyes. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. But um, I just thought this was cute and I thought my daughter would enjoy this. So I'm gonna finish this as a bell pull. And the reason I'm going to do this is um, I actually found the hardware at a cross stitch shop that is now out of business. Um, and I'm gonna take it out. It's the Just Nan hardware. And I'm going to just leave it on the little velvet cushion. <clears throat> Look at that. Is that not beautiful? So I thought, oh, that will be so, so pretty. And uh, so I think my daughter will really, really enjoy that. Um, my oldest daughter. And hopefully I can get that finished pretty soon. Even though she won't get it for spring, she might get it for something. And I've got backing material. I just found some fat quarters. And I think I'm going to use this one instead of this one. I just really didn't like the polka dots. So tell me, did you like the polka dots better? Well, not the polka dots. I guess it's like, well, the dotted fabric, we'll call it, or the floral fabric. Which one you like better on the bunny for the finish? Because um, I'm just like, well, maybe I want this, maybe I want that. I mean, nobody's going to see it, but I want it to look nice, you know, all over. So, 
but I thought that would be good. And this was two strands over two. And, oh yeah, I was gonna show you the stitches. <clears throat> the Leviathan stitches were, or are, this, let me stand up, this blue right here. That's the Leviathan stitches. And then the Smyrna crosses are the, yes, no, that's not them. That's not them. I saw them a minute ago and they just disappeared. Okay, the herringbone stitch is this green here. That. And, yeah, I'm telling you, you do something and you kind of forget what it is. Um, oh, it's the center. No. Those are French knots. There's French knots in the center of the flowers. <sighs> and the Smyrna crosses. Well, you know, maybe I didn't do the Smyrna crosses. Maybe I just left those out. I think I did. But anyway, and I had to sew the strand around the bunny's neck because there was no other way to anchor him down. He did not have anything. So I just took some thread and anchored him down. So, but yeah. Now that bugs me. Hmm. Oh, I think the Smyrna crosses are in the nest. Yeah. Right here in the three nest. So, but yeah. I enjoyed doing it. Um, it was like a finish. Every time you finish the row, that's what band samplers are, which is what this is. And, uh, or was, I should say. But, um, yeah, it was it was kind of fun. And I enjoyed it. Um, it was just something different to do. But it was something cute that I was like, oh, I like this. You know, so there you go. And let's see. I'm not going to show that today. And now I've lost my other finish. Hmm. You know, there's nothing like not being organized. Well, we'll come across it soon. Is that it? Yes, there it is. I knew I would find it. Okay, now, you know I went to the, those of you that have followed my um, floss tubes since the beginning know that I went to the Leela May Design, well, I didn't go, I attended a Zoom retreat with at Leela May Designs and she had Priscilla and Chelsea do a finishing class for her. And so we had pre-work, sorry about the rattling, we had pre, you know, homework to do before the class, pre-stitching. And the pattern that we did is an exclusive and it's called Chick's Garden. Okay, so we had this and we stitched it up on the denim uh, coffee tea dye, I think it's coffee tea dyed fabric or it may just be denim. But anyway, uh, it was two strands over two. And then when we finished it, we um, took it and we glued everything down and she showed us how to do that. So that was good with the Priscilla's Pretty Plaids. Um, and we stuck the cross stitch piece on here. We had the mat board and foam, yeah, mat board, not foam cord, just mat board. Okay, so I got that done and it was all just cross stitch. And then they were nice enough to give us, <clears throat> along with the class, is this barn. And then she showed us how she kind of like poops it up, you know, and makes it Priscilla-fied. Okay. So then um, she said get washers and magnets, you know, to finish. So I have ordered washers and magnets from Amazon twice, and they've been lost in the mail. I'm very disappointed. That's why I still don't have mine. But anyway, you're going to put it here. And then up at the top, she gave us a bonus pattern. And we had to request, the, that was the last day of the retreat, and we had to request if we wanted the fabric to match. Well, of course I wanted the fabric to match. So, <clears throat> um, I got my fabric, and I let it lay around, let it lay around. And finally, I'm like, you know, I really need to do that. So... And I've not ironed it, but it's a finish. Um, it's called On the Farm. I can't show you the graph. 
but isn't that cute? And then I'm going to uh, put it on the little mat board that they included and uh, mount it at the top of the barn. So hopefully I'll have that ready pretty soon as an FFO. But I thought that was just so, so cute. And it's done on the same cloth and it's two over two. And the the flosses that we used that were provided were color and cotton. And this is daffodil. We also had tusk and we had, uh, what was the name of that red? Um, bean cherry. And we have crow. And we have shamrock. It was a limited edition. So pretty. And the good thing about these is they are eight yard skeins. So I've done all those projects and I have this much floss left over this. And I do have red left, but I borrowed it for another project. So, hmm, yeah. And then I couldn't find it. So on the farm, I used DMC 321 because I didn't have any more color and cotton. So, um, but yeah, and the... I used all the tusk, which was what they used for the white. Um, so, and I ran out. So on the farm, I had to use um, Blanc, DMC Blanc, so, or white. So there you go. But anyway, I'm excited about that because I'm like, yay, this is like done. So I'll be able to put that with my little chicken and, um, and it's gonna be so cute. So, so cute. Okay, and I really enjoyed working with the color and cotton. It was a uh, nice thread. Um, it doesn't knot up a lot, and it was two over two, so um, I, I enjoyed it. It was, it was really nice, and from what I understand during the retreat, they really went to a lot of trouble at color and cotton to make sure that we had enough, that there was enough uh, color and cotton supplies there to... Uh, make sure that everybody at the retreat had enough floss in time. So the, and the other companies, I don't think would do that. So I thought that was really something. Oh, sorry. Okay, next, um, I do whip go. And whip go is like bingo, but it's a way to help you finish your, uh, your works in progress or whips, W-I-P-S. And... This month, Jessie Marie, it's our Facebook group, excuse me, she called out the numbers 1 and 17 for June. So, on my whip go board, which I made, it's like a bingo board, and you just number 1 through 25. You can double up your projects, or you can just, when I first started, you know, I didn't know much about it, and so I just put a project for every one, because I have a project for every one. I, I like to start things. So, number one is the Nativity, and I want to finish. And number 17 is Santa Claus is Coming to Town by Priscilla and Chelsea, Stitching with the Housewives. And I want 400 stitches on that, and I because I'm going to work on it during Jolly July. So, <clears throat> oh dear. Oh, here we go. And here we have the pattern, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. And I even have the little mailbox that it goes on. I got the last one at Hobby Lobby during the Christmas season. And it's using all the Call for Classic Color Works. And I've arranged them so neatly in the packet. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is usually the way I keep my floss. Until I, oops, found out about floss rings. Here we go again. I start dropping things. <clears throat> I ought to name my name Miss Dropsy. It's ridiculous. <clears throat> goodness. And I have on my Stitching with the Housewives t-shirt today, uh, just because I just felt like putting it on. Um, but I also have a bag that um, I bought at Panda's Crossing. It's a um, project bag. This was my first project bag I bought, and it is a Scotty Dog project bag. Look at that, because I'm stitching Scotty. And the 17 on there, because they were out of the numbers at Fat Quarter Shop, I just made my own little numbers and stuck a pin on there. So, um, for right now, that's okay, but it's not okay when the pin sticks you because it hurts. But anyway, <clears throat> I worked on this, and it's two threads over two, and it's on the black uh, even weave from Fat Quarter Shop. Good grief. Um, 
and I've got a good amount done. I've got more done than I thought I would uh, just in the one sitting. So I'm just going to fold it over a little bit so you can see. And of course, I'm sorry I didn't iron because I'm lazy. <sighs> Goodness. Okay, so I've got Santa Claus is, and then I've got a little of the uh, vine up above or the branches. So I've got that. So I've got a ways to go. So hopefully I can get the rest of the words done or maybe, I don't know, if, I guess I'll probably finish the vine and then start on the greenery on the vine and leave the words till later. I might do that. I like doing words. A lot of people do not. I don't mind doing backstitch. A lot of people do not. But um, to me, it just means I'm almost done. Yay. So that's a good thing. And I love Christmas a lot and this pattern is just so cute and speaking of christmas patterns <clears throat> the stitching with the housewives um oh i forgot the name of it i want to say away we go or something like that and it had the santa claus in the sleigh with the little houses that i showed last week that is just too cute i've got to have that just really got to have that so hopefully i can get 400 stitches done on that Am I jumping around too much? Mm, did I have caffeine? Who knows? Um, anyway, um, so I'm excited about that one. I was really excited when that number was pulled because I was like, oh, yay, I get to work on this. And I'm going to work on it in July, Jolly July, because I'm planning on doing Jolly July also. So that was project number 17. Okay, project number one. Yes is yes please tell me oh there it is it just fell out of the bag um my poor little graph it's it's had a rough life um this is called nativity row and it's by bent creek and when i saw this i said oh my goodness i have got to make this and I now know why I put it down because when I went to pick it up to stitch on it, I was at the wise men. Let me move this. And guess what? The wise man's robes, I did not have the color purple haze. Did I have the color in DMC? No, I did not. So I'm going to have to either have to, little bit of, I'm either going to have to, I cannot talk today. I'm either going to have to go to the store Oh, excuse me, and make an emergency floss run or go to my stitch shop, which right now is closed, and buy some purple haze. But anyway, it's two over two, and this fabric is, yes, it is. I need to look. Um, this is one of those professional videos. You can really tell, can't you? Um, here it is. Okay. All right, this is 28 count Cashel Smoky Pearl. And this is what it looks like, wrinkles and all. And this is what I've got done so far. I got the manger scene and I've got P through T. And then I got the first wise man, he, man, he has a head, no body. So I skipped over and started on the second wise man and I'm still working on him, so. And I was going to go to the right, but I couldn't find the blackboard color I needed for the rest of the letters. So, I don't know. I think the Gremlins have come and stolen my floss. Because I don't care what I work on here lately. There's always something missing. So, but um, this is a fun stitch. These uh, Nativity Rows go very fast. And it's interesting to see how it takes shape and it tells the Christmas story with the alphabet. And I really, really like that. So 28 count over two. And I'm using Weeks Dye Works, um, a couple of DMCs that I did not have the Weeks Dye Works for and some a few gentle arts that they called for. So uh, it's, it's just a beautiful, beautiful pattern. And uh, I can't wait to finish that. Oops. And this, hopefully, will be a finish this month. And I can mark off another whip. Yay, another block. All right, now, <clears throat> the next thing I'm doing is um, 
I'm doing a stitch along, which is called a SAL, S-A-L, stitch along. And I'm doing several stitch alongs, and there's a couple right now I'm not working on, uh, like the pocket full of posies. I've kind of let that fall by the wayside because I had to finish my whip goes for my whips from last month for whip go, and I needed to finish my my ornament for a uh, whip go. So um, I started the Wizard of Oz uh, piece from Satsuma Street, and. Um, it's in my beautiful project bag from Deborah, Stitching Granny of 17. I just love her to pieces. Um, this is a four part um, stitch along. It's a mystery sale. And um, you can go to Satsuma Street at Etsy.com, and I will link that below. And the first chapter came out May the 14th, the second chapter came out. May the 28th. The third chapter comes out June the 11th. And I'm making a little progress, but I've had to do a lot of ripping. And the design is 184 by 184. And it says it's 13 by 13 when it's stitched on 14 count Ada or 28 count fabric. And they stitched it on a uh, green sapphire. Well, I thought, mm, yeah, green sapphire would be nice, but don't have any and don't know where to get any. Because I didn't see any anywhere. So, I picked up a piece of star sapphire. And it's witchled. And it's stiff. But the more you work with it, like I hear, you know, on other people's floss tubes. the And I never noticed it till people started saying that. Um, the less, you know, the more pliable it gets. I guess is what I should say. So, <clears throat> it uses all DMC floss. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, um... I would probably have the whole border done, except I had to do an extensive amount of ripping because of a slub. And a slub is a larger, um, oh, I guess they call it a warp, maybe. Anyway, it's a larger thread, is all I know, in the linen. And it was glopped up. The lighting wasn't good. And guess what? I stitched over three. And when I went to meet the middle part, it did not meet. And I was not a happy girl. So, I had to rip out a good bit. But this is what I have so far. And, yeah, you can see that. I've got the emerald at the top. And this right here is what I should be stitching on and showing you right now. But guess what? I didn't. And I should have this and this done with rainbows. And they'll be like it's a diamond shape. And there'll be two more rainbows down here at the bottom. <clears throat> but anyway, this is chapter one right here. And there's an emerald at every corner. But it's very, very pretty. But I ripped out all of this and did it over. And also all of this. Yeah. I was so not happy. But it's on 28 count. Like I said, which will linen. It's two over two and just DMC floss. And I'm really, really enjoying doing the Wizard of Oz sal. <clears throat> it's just, um, I love the Wizard of Oz, I guess because my name's Dorothy, for real. And um, I have Scotty Dog, and he's black, and everybody thinks he's Toto, but he's not, because, oh, excuse me, because Toto was a Cairn Terrier. So anyway, oh, and I said this was four parts, excuse me, this one is six parts. It's the Louisa Matt Alcott of... Uh, Sal that's four parts, but it's not come out. It'll come out June the 12th. So, I can't wait to get this one done. <clears throat> At least caught up. So, that's good. And then, let's go to my whips. Okay. Um, ooh, what does this go to? I do not know. Okay. Um, oh, I do too know. Let's put it there where it goes. Because, you know, this is how I lose my floss is when I'm shoveling th shoving things around. And then it falls out of the floss bags and, oh my, or I mean the project bags. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Okay. Um, the next project I have, I'm using the uh, Sulky Thread Pack I got from the um, Expo, from the Move the Barrier Collection. And yet again, I'm storing my silky threads in such a neat, orderly fashion. Um, 
but it's it's 12 weight cotton and you use one strand and the thing i like about the sulky threads <clears throat> except for the fact that they the the spools roll off the table is you take your uh fingernail and you just push this up you see how that goes up like that and you slip your thread in there and the end and then you push it down and and that way you don't have thread everywhere so i like that that's that's really good and it, and one thread covers very very well it really does now this one was not charted <clears throat> um with sulky thread it was charted with dmc but i was like you know i got all this thread it's got like i think 50 yards on every spool let's see Well, seem like some, I may be wrong, but somewhere I think I heard every spool had 50 yards. But anyway, um, it wasn't that expensive. So I took this and I was like, hmm, I'll just be converting this. This is, it's time to bloom or time to bloom. And it's by Annie B's Folk Art. And when I saw this little sheep, I thought he is just so cute. And it's going to make a great little pillow. Or small so uh, I really changed things now on the white I used 1001 the Christmas red I used 1000 I used 1147 the pistachio green I've still not decided what I'm gonna use yet because I didn't have one um well yes I did I did I lied I used 369 in the DMC there's the pistachio green that was DMC because I didn't have a pistachio color. The turquoise, I used 1046. The turquoise light, I've used 598 DMC. Uh, that's called for. The beaver gray light, I used 1328. The old gold light, I used 4002. The forest green dark, 1174. The forest green, 989. The dusty rose ultra dark, 3350. And the Dusty Rose 4046 from uh, Sulky. And then the Pewter Gray Very Dark, which is 3799. I'm going to use, um, I've used that for the sheep's face and, and legs. So, I will show you my progress now. I've made a good bit of progress uh, since we last uh, saw it. And it works up really, really nice. And... It's all counted cross stitch, but some of, oh goodness gracious, too much junk. Uh, well, it's not junk, it's good stuff. But um, I just kind of stopped right in the middle of a part, one of the snowflakey looking things, that, or the flowers, I should say. But that's, that's what I've got done. And it's one strand of the sulky. The sheep is sulky. The flowers are sulky. The words are sulky. So, so far, all I've used is nothing but sulky. The yellow little flower blooms are um, sulky also. And it's just one strand over two. And it's great, great coverage. And this is on 28 count white cashel linen. And it was in my stash in my closet in my little stitchy closet. So I just thought it was so cute. Now the one thing I did do, the Dusty Rose, I was going to use, oh wait, for the Dusty Rose, I'm going to use the Dusty Rose everywhere except for the little heart on his little behind. The little heart on his behind, because it was variegated, is 4046 of Sulky Thread. Now, <clears throat> the reason I'm going to use the Dusty Rose DMC um, 3733 everywhere else is because it's not variegated and doesn't go to a white. Um, this one, when I saw it on the spool, I thought, oh, this will be perfect. But when you take it off, part of it's white and it doesn't show up on the fabric. So I thought, oh, that is not good. So that's what we'll be doing with that. And if I decide to make any other adjustments, I will let you know. So, but the graph is he, it's it's big, so you can see it real easy and very easy to read. 
So that's a plus. I really like that. That's the first Annie B's folk art pattern I've ever done. And I really, really like her patterns. I really do. And uh, I can't wait to get him done. He's just cute. It was just one of those things like, I need to stitch on this. It wasn't in my plan or anything. All right, next we have, um, this is another one I've had to rip out, so it doesn't look like I've done much of anything. Um, I'm doing, I forgot, I'm also doing the Country Cottage Needlework Sampler of the Month Sal. <laughs> that one's on Facebook. Is that a long name or what? I wish they would have given it a shorter name, but that's okay too. And, of course, it's June now, and I'm on June. Yes, maybe this won't be as bad as February was and just drag on and on and on. Um, no, that's not it. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, okay, here we go. All right, here's the pattern. Country Cottage Needleworks. Oops, Claire. And I've got the middle part done. And I started with the little flowers or, yeah, no, strawberries. And I don't know what the yellow things were. But anyway, when I got there, I was like, oh, this is wrong. So I had to rip out all the middle because it was off the center here. And you can just barely see that little yellow outline right there that I've got. Because I've had to rip everything else out because it was in the wrong place. But uh, hopefully I'll get that stitched back up. This is two strands over two. And it's just a piece of ivory wrinkled linen out of my uh, stash. And I do, I do apologize for the uh, embroidery hip marks and the wrinkle, wrinkles. <sighs> but I'm just not in the ironing mode. It's 89 degrees here today. And it's hot. And all I need is to turn the iron on. I mean, I have air. Don't get me wrong. But my craft room is upstairs and it gets hot so even with the iron and the fan on so anyway these are all um country cottage needlework no oh, not country cottage needleworks these are all classic color works uh flosses and a couple of dmc's um that i had to substitute in but i'm really enjoying this and i think the little yellow house in the sun were so cute um and it's just, it's an easy stitch, and it's fun, and it's happy, and it makes me happy when I stitch it. So, whether I get it done this month or not, it's okay. You know, it's just all about making me happy. All right, next, <clears throat> um, I got out my favorite little gadget here, my bead buddy. This is the small one I have. I showed it in my last floss tube, I think, um, or maybe the floss tube before last. And you just put your beads on here and it's got like foam and it holds your needle and everything and you can take the top off and hold this in your lap or put it on your table and just pick up your beads and it's just really easy. I love these things and I linked this one in my floss tube um, last time but I'll try to remember to link that below. But now I'm doing a Mill Hill kit. Uh, it's Buttons and Beads Spring Series, and it's called Tea Time. And this was one of our projects at our coffee, tea, and chocolate retreat at Panda several years ago. She got, I mean, we were, you know, she had the frame and everything. And we started it there. And then I came home, and I stitched on it and stitched on it. And I got all the cross-stitching done, and I'm like, <sighs> yeah. And I didn't stitch anymore. And this is two strands over, it's on perforated paper. Um, I believe it's white perforated paper. And um, it's two strands and it uses DMC floss, I guess. Yes, it does, because that's what was included in the, oops, in the kit. And this is all I've got left out of what I've done. Well, I lied, here's, here's my usual crumpy thing. But I'm beading now. So I've been putting beads on and right now I'm on the teapot putting green beads up on the spout. So I need to do the border and a couple of little fill-ins on the coffee cup. And yeah, and on the teapot and it'll be done. And it'll be ready to put in the frame. 
But I just thought this was really, really cute. And I can't wait to get this in my kitchen. Just too cute. And it's on perforated paper, which is 14 count. And perforated paper, I hear a lot of people say that they're afraid to work on it. I have to cut this with scissors. I've never torn a piece of perforated paper ever. And I've done, um, I mean, I'm sure if you stood there and went, you know, and you ripped it. Don't you love my sound effects? Uh, if you ripped it, I'm sure that, you know, it would tear. But I think you really have to do some ripping. You know, it's like that piece of mail you get this thick. But um, it's colorful. It's happy. And I just really, really like it. And when I put the beads on, you just do like a little cross stitch. And, um, you know, they include the beading needle, the thread. I mean, everything you need. And, of course, on this, I do stitch in hand because you don't put a piece of perforated paper on a hoop. Hoop, I guess I should say. And um, the graph is fairly easy to read. It's just a little bit busy. So you do all the cross stitches first. And then you put your beads on. And if you have any treasures or anything or buttons, and this one just has one button. And this is a flower button from the Button connect Collection. And that will go on the, the picture. And it's going to go in between the, the word green and chai. So hopefully this will be a finish sometime. This is on my WhipGo board, but I just had the urge to do some beading and I thought mm, I'll just do that so I did and uh, so that's a good thing all right then next I had because it's uh it was Memorial Day weekend I was working on something patriotic because I just wanted to and I picked stars and stripes from Cherry Hill Stitchery oh I better not show you that that's the graph Okay, and this is Stars and Stripes Forever. And this is a PDF from Cherry Hill Stitchery. I think I got this from Fat Quarter Shop. It uses all DMC flosses. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten colors. The graph is easy to read. They have one that's color, and they also have one that's black and white. So you can choose. And... I've had to do a little ripping on this one. I don't know what's going on with the ripping here lately. This is a piece of raw linen that I had in my stash. It's 28 count. And like I said, all my floss is DMC. The reason I do not have flagpoles is, guess what? The color for the flagpoles has mysteriously disappeared, as is one of the vine colors. So I stopped, and I'm going to have to match up a different color because the color I needed well, I needed to have, I do not have. Or else I need to make an emergency floss run to the store. Okay, so here is my progress on stars and stripes. See, I've got the two flags up there. They're just floating in the air. No poles. But they will have poles soon. So I just like the poles, the rest of the greenery, and some little uh, twirly things out here. And then another star and some flowers and greenery down at the bottom. And I'll be done with this one. So who knows? I could have this one ready by the 4th of July. So, and it's two over two on raw linen. And yet again, sorry, it's wrinkled. But, you know, it's hot. It's not ironing weather. So you may see a lot of wrinkled stuff here lately. And um, those are my whips this week. So there you go. I looked and I was like, yeah, my pile is empty. So that's a good thing. And somebody said, boy, you sure do stitch on a lot of stuff. How do you keep track? Well, I just like to just, you know, if I pick up something, I'm like, oh, I want to stitch on this. I want to stitch on it. And I just pick it up and start stitching. Now, um, Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I do know something else I was going to talk about. And I lied when I said I was not going to talk about anything but cross-stitch. I'm so sorry. But I've only heard this mention on one other floss tube. And I just love Vonna Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitcher. She is just awesome. And right now, every Friday night at 7 o'clock 
I guess it's Eastern Standard Time. Uh, she is doing a free class about punch needle embroidery. And, um, Lord, where did I put mine now that I'm talking about it? Um, and she tells you all about the fabric, all about how to do things and the patterns and things. And when you get them, um, okay, like this is Uncle Sam, okay? And I'm not going to show you the pattern because that wouldn't be good. Um, it's just the outline of Uncle Sam and the outline of the stars. And you trace it on a piece of, I think it's weaver's cloth. And you get a Morgan hoop and you stretch it into the, yeah, like here's the weaver's cloth. Okay. And you get a hoop and you stretch it and you put the, um, where did it go? Oh, here it is. Duh. Um, and you put it on the hoop. Now, this one was already on a hoop. Um, and this is my pattern. This is a little kitty cat. I know. I'm doing a cat. Um, and I use the uh, Ultra Punch Precision Adjustable Needle which is what she suggested. Now, she had also suggested for you to get a pattern at Shepherd's Needle in Arkansas. And the lady there, the shop owner there was, you know, she had plenty of supplies and everything ordered. Well, I didn't see the video until the day before. And I was like, oh, I have punch needle stuff. I'll just pick something up because I've punched before, but I just haven't punched in a while. So I thought, I could use a refresher course. So I used this Plum Pudding Needle Art, A Hallowed Eve, with the three punch needle ornaments. And the cat is the one. No, that's not it. I lied. I lied, I lied, I lied. Oh, never mind. Excuse me. Wrong pattern. Okay, this is a Pine Mountain pattern the uh, from the Punch and Cookie Club. Okay, excuse me. Okay, and this is what it's supposed to look like. It's the little cat. And I've even got the frame with the little witchy legs. I got it a long time ago. Uh, it came together. Uh, the frame was separate, but it was a little kit. The only thing you had to supply was the floss. And Punch Needle does use a good bit of floss. Um, but, you know, most of the time people use DMC or sometimes they do use other things. But this is my Punch Needle right here and it has a little gauge that you set on the side as to how you want it punched well until Bonna I never knew you know how tall it was supposed to be so um I did like a four I think so my little kitty cat is sticking out pretty far and this is what the uh back side looks like but when you turn it over there's the punch side so, uh, I'm looking forward to, um, you know, getting this one done and framed. But I will show you something that I did. Uh, the pattern I showed you, the plum pudding, blah, 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 blah. plum pudding needle art. Bet you couldn't say that three or four times in a row. Um, I've got this one finished, but I haven't decided what I'm going to do with it. And... This is a witch hat. It says it could be an ornament. I don't know if I want it to be an ornament or not. But there's my punched um, little witch hat right there in the different colors. And that was my first punch needle project ever. I was so proud of it, even though I broke my punch needle. I had the, the old kind, the little kind. And uh, I'm going to show you the back so you can kind of see what the back looks like. Um... And this is what this is what you'd be looking at. Now this is the wrong side. And then what you saw before was the right side. But this is the part you see when you're punching. And you see how I had little circles and I just went around the little patterns and things. But yeah, it was it's a lot of fun. And it's something that's very mindless. And I mean you just hold the needle up and down and you go punch, 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 punch. But you've really, really got to uh keep your eye on um, you know, if you're punching close enough together and stuff. Now, this one's definitely not perfect, but hey, it's my first one. 
I can always use that as an excuse. But anyway, if you'd like to learn how to punch, I suggest that you go on YouTube, look up Bonna Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitcher, and she posts those videos from Friday night at 7 o'clock. I know she's had two so far, uh, maybe even three because I've fallen behind since I was camping. But uh, she posts those on YouTube, and uh, she'll tell you everything you need to know about punch needle. And she's got some really neat ideas with a clothespin, so you'll have to go watch that to find that out, too. So, I just wanted to mention that. Um, <clears throat> so, that's my only thing that's not um, cross-stitch. Okay. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the Blackbird Weekend Sale. And that's with Brenda and the Cereal Starter. And I'm so glad that Brenda has like a course of treatment and things look up a little bit more for her than they than she thought they would. So that's good. Um, I'm just praying for you, Brenda. I really am. Because, uh, I mean, it's, it's hard. So that you can do it. Okay. So... My blackbird pattern I picked was American Eagle because I've had this one kitted up for quite some time and I was like, oh, that's so pretty. Now, the only thing is I don't think I'm going to put this B in there. I may just leave it out. I just don't want a letter just floating in the air. So, I'll probably leave that one out. Uh, the only thing I didn't like about this pattern is half of the patterns on one page and half of the patterns on the other page when... It looks to me like the whole entire pattern could have fit on one page and they could have just put the floss stuff on another page. But that's okay. I still like it and I'm still going to do it. And I got Confederate Gray 32 Count by Weeks Dye Works. And the Confederate Gray I got, I got at Stitch and Frame in Rock Hill. I was there not too long ago and I didn't see any I wasn't really looking looking for it but I did not see any so when you when I first started out all I had was two chimneys so the first weekend I stitched some on it I didn't stitch a lot so I've still got the roof and I'm starting to come down the side of the house and this uses gentle arch threads and it's uh, two strands over two. And there's one week style works that it uses. It's Pelican Gray. I'm using all the Call 4 fabric. And I just love this material. Even though it's so stinking wrinkled. Oh my goodness. <sighs> yeah. Next time I've got to iron. No matter how hot it is. It'll probably be 105 degrees knowing my luck. But anyway. Uh, so we'll get that done. And it said to use one strand of floss over two linen threads. Mm -mm. I tried that, and I just did not care for um, the coverage. I like my coverage to be solid. I don't want any of this sketchy stuff. So, I went ahead and just um, used two strands. So, of course, I'm going to need more. And I forgot to tell you, this pattern is in the Sweet Land of Liberty Blackbird Design book. This is an oldie but a goodie. I've had this one for, oops, I've had this one for quite some time. Um, so I'm looking forward to stitching on that this coming weekend. And the next thing, I need to start stitching on this one. Um, this was also a retreat project at Pandas Crossing, and it's just so fun. And this one's on 28 count antique white Laguna. Lugana. Lugana. Oh my goodness. Do I need help or what? Um, it's really three patterns that I'm going to be stitching. But the one I've started is Laundry, The Never Ending Cycle, My Hands On Design. Okay, we're using DMC flosses. And I'm storing in them, them in my usual neat fashion. <coughs> yeah. Um... 
and I'll show you my progress on this piece. I didn't get much done at the retreat, and this has been several years ago, so don't think I just went to the retreat yesterday, okay? Because I didn't. Um, yet again, I just kind of leave my threads just dangling where I stop. That way, when I pick it up, it's not like, oh, I gotta thread the needle, blah, 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 you know, all that kind of stuff, figure out what color I'm gonna use. That takes too much time. But anyway, this is 28 count Lugana. I used two strands over two of DMC and I've got the hangers. And then the little, um, what design is that? It's just like a swirly design. So there is a, this is one of three in the laundry collection. And this is a 2018 pattern. Um, that didn't take any time to stitch. But another pattern that goes with it is self-service, loads of fun, the laundry company. So that's the other, another pattern that goes with it. And yeah, there's, I thought there were three patterns. Don't tell me I've lost one. <sighs> yeah. And then there's another thing that says wash and fold. Loads of fun. And this irony, the mystery stitch. Yeah. So, let me look. This may be the third pattern. Oh, here it is. Irony, the opposite of wrinkly. I need to do this one really quick. <laughs> but I thought that was just precious. And I saw all three of them done, and they were on a washboard. And it said wash and fold, and that's their um, little bonus pattern that they included. And, of course, there's not one here. But I've or already ordered my washboard, so I cannot wait to get, my to get my pieces done. So I was like, oh, I need to hurry up and pick this up and finish this. You know, that's my, my story. Let me hurry up and finish this. And I've got like 50,000 things going at one time. But that's going to be something that I'm going to work on. I may have to substitute it for something on my whip, my whip board. No, oh, whip go board. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, so what is next? Okay, I've done that, and those are my plans of things. Oh, well, I've got plans. I'm going to stitch on the laundry. I'm going to do the blackbird sow, and I'm going to stitch on my uh, Santa Claus is coming to town and the nativity for sure. Probably a little bit on the Stars and Stripes. I'll definitely stitch on the Wizard of Oz, uh, Satsuma Street piece. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, that's a lot of stitching in one week. And hopefully I will finish, I mean, FFO something, which is finally finish it. Because I call it finally finishing because it lays around for quite some time. You know, I've still not done the apron yet. Mm, yeah. But anyway, um... I did get some haul. Um, my favorite piece of haul is the Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Magazine. Yay! And I'm sure you'll see this with loads of um, floss tubers. Okay, there's Twin Peaks Primitive pattern in here. And, you know, like Kitten Stitcher, she's got a pattern in here. It's Rejoice, Always Rejoice. Thought that was pretty but i'm not going to go through the whole thing but what i am going to go through is before if you were a digital subscriber you were able to get um you could download issues from the digital library well now if you're a print subscriber you can also download from uh on the digital access link and you can download uh issues i mean from the digital library but the thing that really got me is now punch needle and primitive stitcher magazine presents rather be stitching now on youtube and they've got a new floss tube channel and i will link that below and i'm sure it will be just fantastic so we'll have to um uh, it says they talk about cross stitching punch needle behind the scenes sneak peeks at um Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher, New Stitching Must Haves, and Lots of Fun Giveaways. So I was like, oh, yay. So, and there's lots of nice punch needle in here. Teresa Kogut had a beautiful uh, piece that's um, 
in here and I the punch needle and I can't oh here it is it's called patriotic you isn't that cute and it's just like on a little paddle thing and I just thought that was just too too cute and she got her supplies they she listed everywhere she got the supplies and uh, so that's that's really good um and she gives really good directions tells you how to set the needle and where to punch and just all kinds of good stuff like that so and where to glue and everything i need help with gluing but anyway this is my favorite favorite cross stitch magazine stitch cross stitch and country crafting i miss that magazine it was good but anyway uh and there's a puntini puntini piece and then a Twin Peaks Primitive piece. I'm going to cover up my address. But a Twin Peaks Primitive piece. And this one really caught my fancy. And I don't know who this one's by. Um, and there's a wonderful mattress finish in here by uh, uh, Bonna Pfeiffer, Stitching with the Housewives. I mean, not Stitching with the Housewives. The Twisted Stitcher. Good grief. Um, this one is the Be Kind Sampler. And it's uh, Teresa Miller of Teresa's Primitive Treasures. That's it. So I thought, I think that's just really, really pretty. And I'm just not a bee person. But I like that for some reason. So who knows? You may be seeing that one. But anyway, I thought this was just an outstanding issue. So that was part of my haul. I mean, I look forward to it. I start, you know, salivating. And of course, Priscilla and Chelsea had their piece in here, the summer piece. Um... It's real cute. It matches the spring piece that they put out. Okay. Um, <clears throat> oh, I forgot. Giveaway. Um, almost forgot. Um, the winner of the giveaway. I loved all your comments. <laughs> they were so sweet and so nice. And I could tell that Dolores is missed. Maybe I should go and just let Dolores do this floss tube. She was very, very popular today. Or this time. And last time also. Um, but the winner is Nanette McDougal Dykes, and she won the Wit and Wisdom pattern, and I will get that in the mail to you as soon as you, you need to email me, Nanette, with, uh, your, well, of course, I've got your name, but you need to email me with your address, and then I'll get that pattern out to you as soon as possible, so hopefully by Tuesday, if I can get an email from you. But um, I got the other pattern out in the mail. It was a day late getting out. So hopefully she has received it by now. So um, anyway, and on that thought, let's have another giveaway. So the next giveaway I have is a Mill Hill kit. And I like this one so much, I bought two of them. <laughs> so this one's called, it's a Buttons and Beads Autumn Series, and it's called Espresso. And that's what it looks like. It's got the cute little heart button. It's got all the floss, all the beads that you need. It's on perforated paper. And people, perforated paper is the... In fact, I think it's easier to stitch on than um, Ada or linen. Because the holes are bigger. And when you finish, it's like... Well, number one, you don't have to worry about any loose threads. And it's a very compact project because you just take it with you. The worst part is just figuring out what color threads, you know, what threads are what color. But it tells you usually, um, you know, a good description of the color. And I usually just take out my DMC um, floss chart, you know, with all the colors of the flosses if I have problems and figure that out. But this is a beautiful, beautiful pattern. And, of course, I don't have mine even started yet. But I had two. And I was like, hmm, need to get rid of this one. So, <clears throat> the question, which I always forget to answer, ask, oh, wait. First of all, the next thing I always forget is, you must be 18 to enter this content or this uh, thing. Do not say giveaway, uh, pr free prize, freebie, nothing like that. You know all the words not to say. Um, and... Oh, there was something else I was going to say. Mm. I know there's something else to do with the rules. Because I know the rules just, mm, yeah, but it's just like, 
Anyway, so you need to answer the question and use the word coffee. And I want you to tell me if you are a coffee drinker or a tea drinker. And, but you still got to use the word coffee to get this. And I need you to tell me what your favorite brand or flavor of coffee is. And Starbucks is not, well, Starbucks is a brand. Um, so I can't say that either. But um, just your favorite coffee flavor or brand. Or if you don't like coffee, just say, I do not like coffee. I love tea. Or I do not like coffee or tea. I drink water or milk or whatever. But I think that would be something good. And then also, don't forget to tell me about which piece of fabric you like better for the bunny bell pull finish. You know, the one that says spring delight or small delight. I don't know. Whatever it was. Anyway, um, I think that's it. I know I'll probably kick myself because I will think, oh, there is something else I needed to mention. Um, I would just like to, um, you know, just... Um, Thank everyone for watching and tuning in. I hope if you've lasted this long, God help you. <laughs> but um, I just have a good time and hopefully I'll have some more visitors. I'm trying to coerce more people. You'd be surprised. I'm like, oh, come on, be a guest on my floss tube. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. So we're having a little difficulty here. But hopefully I can find some guests to be on my floss tube because I know when I'm alone, I'm quite boring. And I would have been outside today except A, it was hot. B, there were mosquitoes. And C, we just had a thunderstorm. And I didn't want to get struck by lightning or rained on. And I sure didn't want my precious cross stitch to get rained on either. But anyway, um, I'm going to bid you uh, farewell this week. And I want you to remember, and I heard this on somebody's cross, uh, somebody's floss tube, and I love it. Don't forget to cross all the X's. And I will see you next week. Bye-bye.